Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will discuss uh, more about uh, subgroups. So, we have seen one example. So, we have taken the group of integers and then uh, looked at all possible subgroup of uh, that group of integers. So, uh, what we do now, uh, as I said before, so you also need to get uh, some comfortable, comfortable with uh, this abstraction. So, that is why we look at uh, subgroups of any given group and then see some necessary conditions uh, being some subset being uh, subgroup or not. Okay, so, let us start with uh, group G. So, now I will start actually suppressing the notation. I will not write what is star anymore. Okay, but you always should remember that there is a binary operation always hidden. Okay, so now <coughs> recall. So, this is the definition of the subgroup. Okay, so H is said to be a subgroup. Okay, let us start with the subset. So, a non empty subset H of G said to be a subgroup if H itself a group with respect to the restricted binary operation. So, this is of G. Okay. So, this is something we have defined. So, what I mean by that? So, you have the binary operation defined on G. So, what you do? You restrict this to H cross H. So, then we demand that this is first of all a map from H cross H to H. So, that is like a closure property and then H with respect to this binary operation should be a group a group on its own. Okay. So, for example, associativity comes for free. So, we do not need to verify because associativity is satisfied in the group itself, bigger group itself. And then you need to verify identity element is there or not and then inverse is there or not. Okay. But I already gave you one exercise that identity element of H must be same as identity element of G if H is a subgroup. And similarly, given A of H, element A of H, so that inverse of that A inside H it will be same as the inverse of A inside G. Okay. So, now we will see various characterization of these subgroups. Okay. So, here is the proportion. So, we start with H being subgroup. Okay. So, the following statements are equivalent. So, the first condition is H is a subgroup. So, that means so according to the definition that we gave here. So, the star restricted to H cross H with respect to that it is a group. Okay. That is the definition. So, the second condition is actually so H is subset of G identity is in H and given okay maybe I will write it as separate things okay so H satisfies the following conditions. What is it? Identity should be in H. The second condition is for all A B, A B should be in H if A comma B is in H. Okay. The third condition, A inverse should be in H for all A in H. Okay. So these are all 
three condition it should satisfy. The third thing which is somewhat uh, simplifies these two conditions. So, these two conditions can be combined okay all three conditions can be combined and then we can say that H satisfies. So, to begin with H is just a subset of G. So, just a subset okay and this satisfies the first condition okay we can combine everything together as I said. So, you just say that it is actually a non empty subset okay. So, that is should be given okay. So, A B inverse should be in H for all A B in H okay. So, all these three content the three conditions can be combined and then just told in this one condition this A B inverse should be inside H for all A B in H okay. So, 1 implies 2 is more or less easy from the definition okay because once you have done that exercise that I told the so identity of G is same as identity of H. So, then it has to be there and similarly the inverse should be there. So, since star restricted to H cross H is a map from H cross H to H. So, the second condition is also satisfied. So, 1 implies 2 is trivial. Now, if you think about it 2 implies 3 is also trivial because given A B in H you have B inverse in H and if you take the product between them that should be in H from 2 okay. So, 2 implies 3 is also verified. So, now let us verify 3 implies 1. So, what we need to verify? We need to verify that H must be subgroup. First note that this if I take some element A in H, so because H is non empty, so there exists A in A. Okay. So, you fix this A. So, then what happens? Since A B inverse is in H for all A B in H, in particularly A A inverse. So, that should be inside H by taking B as A inside 3. Okay. So, by taking B as A in 3. So, this you get. So, now A A inverse is in H. So, that means identity is in H. So, this is what we get. Okay. So, now you go back to the same 3. So, since identity is in there, now if you take any B, so start with any B in H, but these two will imply what? Identity times B inverse, which is B inverse. So, that is should be in H again by 3. Okay. Again by 3, because you take A to be identity and B to be B, no problem. Okay. So, this tells given any B you have B inverse in H. So, now we can verify that uh, it is indeed a subgroup. So, what are all the things we need to verify? Closure property, identity, existence of identity, existence of inverse and associativity. Because star is just a restriction map associativity is true for more elements than H, it is true for the ambient group G itself. So, it must be true for H. So, associativity we do not need to verify. So, we already verified that identity is there. So, because the identity of the group itself is in H, so it must serve as identity. So, it so identity is there. So, now given B, we also proved B inverse is in H. So, the B inverse will be again inverse of B. So, in existence of inverse is also clear. Now, we need to prove ex closure property. So, now since if I start with any B, okay, start with uh, any A B in H. So, we know that B inverse in H for any B you have B inverse in H. 
so now what you can do you can take a b inverse inverse okay so now instead of b you take b inverse in 3 so then this a b inverse will become a b inverse inverse and this should be in h and it is not hard to prove a inverse inverse must be a for all a in g okay because a a inverse is identity again a inverse a is identity that forces that inverse of a inverse must be a itself so that means this becomes a b so now what we proved we started with a b in h we proved that a b should be in h so that means the star restricted to h cross h maps h cross h to h so that is what we have done okay so that means this this uh, h is indeed a subgroup h star restricted to h cross h is indeed a group and it is indeed a subgroup. So, most of the time it will be easier to verify this third condition okay, and then we can immediately say this must be a subgroup. Okay. <clears throat> so, now let us look at the same conditions when g is being finite. Okay. So, let us start with uh, g being finite. So, I hope all of you know the difference between finite and infinite. Okay. So, finite means we can talk about the cardinal t and cardinal t being a finite natural number. Okay. So, let, let me just uh, define. So, g is finite, there exist n in n okay such that and there exist a bijective map so i n bijective corresponds to g so this means bijectively correspond okay so that means the cardinal t of g is n so that is the meaning of finiteness so now what happens if g is finite so whether we can simplify something yeah the characterization of subgroup of subgroup or not that is what i want to see so already we know that it is enough to just check this ab inverse is in h for all ab in h okay so now what we want to do we want to say that so we don't need to really check the inverse thing when it is finite okay so, for that we need to understand what happens to the finite group. So, let us start with the finite group and then see. So, let G be a finite group. So, that means the cardinal t of G is some n natural number. Okay. So, it has only finitely many number of elements. So, now say a is in G. Okay. So, now the closure property says if I multiply A with itself then what happens it must be again in A again in G. For example, I can multiply A times A I can call it A star A, A which is so just to simplify a notation I can use this exponential notation I can call this as A square. So, what I mean by A square A square is just A star A. Similarly, I can define what is a power k if it is a star etc star a k times. So, the associativity guarantees that the brackets in which you perform the operation that will not be that will not create any issue. So, I can just take this unique element a star a star a and then call it a power k. So, we already introduced a inverse. So, what if k is negative? For example, when k is minus 2, what I mean by a minus 2? a minus 2 just means a minus 1 power 2, that is a inverse power 2. Okay? So, that is what I mean by 
a power k. So, this way I can define a power k for all k in integers. So, now note that given a in g, a square should be in g. Similarly, if I take a cube that is a times a times a that also should be in g. So, a inverse is also in g. So, that means a inverse square that is also in g. Similarly, a inverse cube that is also in g and so on. Okay. So, that means what it says I can take a a square a cube a power 4 a power 5 and so on all these are elements all these are elements of our group G. Okay. But G is finite okay. but what G is finite. So, that means what that means this cannot be all distinct. Okay. So, it cannot have infinitely many elements. So, that means this set a a square etcetera a power k etcetera even though it looks like we have taken infinitely many elements this set must be finite. Why it is finite? Because this is just being a subset of G. Since it is a subset of G, so it must be finite. So, since it is finite at least there exist 1 m and then 1 m dash such that a power m equal to a power m dash. Okay. So, now what I can do I can multiply by a power inverse of a power m dash on the both side and then see what happens. So, you just multiply on the right hand side a power m dash inverse. Okay. So, this becomes a power m dash and then a power m dash inverse. So, note that so these two actually multiply to identity because they are inverse to each other and it is not hard to check if I take any a power k the inverse of that will be just a power minus k. Okay. So, to check this all you need to do is just multiply them you take this element and then prove that it must be the inverse. But what is the definition of a power k? If k is positive then it is a times a times a and then if you multiply with a power minus k then what will happen this is a inverse etcetera a inverse and this is also k times and this is also k times. So, that you can see that it will all get cancelled and then you give identity. So, the left hand side you get a power m a power minus m dash equal to identity. Okay. So, now if you see this by definition this is a times etcetera a m times and then here you have a inverse etcetera a inverse m dash times. Okay. So, now if you group them like this and so on. So, then you can say these get cancelled and then you get identity. So, you get exactly a power m minus m dash a's. Okay. So, basically what you proved so this a power m minus m dash must be identity. But what is m? m is oh sorry I have taken m is smaller. Uh, I can take m dash to be smaller not a problem the same argument take m dash to be smaller because there is a symmetry. Okay. So, then you see that this m minus m dash so that is positive. So, m is greater than m dash so that says m minus m dash is greater than or equal to 1. So, that means this equation a power m minus m dash can be rewritten as a times 
a power m minus m dash minus 1 times identity ok. So, note that m minus m dash minus 1 is just greater than or equal to 0 ok. It is some non-negative integer it could be 0 in that case this number will become 0 a power 0 you take it to be identity ok. So, that is the convention. So, now you have what is the most important thing a inverse is given by some power of a and that is also non-negative power of a that is what most important thing. So, this implies that the inverse of a which is a inverse is given by a power m minus a minus m does minus 1 ok. So, which is non negative integral power of e. So, that means if I take this uh, set identity which is a power 0 a a square and so on ok. So, this set is a finite set and in this set itself the inverse of A lies. So, A inverse lies in this set ok. So, that is what we have observed ok. We can actually conclude something more about this set ok now in this part at this point, but anyway we will, we will do that uh, just uh, uh, one minute later. First we will use this and then observe what we can say about subgroups. So, now you start with a subgroup of G ok. So, we want to prove that H is a subgroup if and only if A B is in H for all A comma B in H and of course, G you assume to be a finite group. So, for finite group we have this easy way of checking. So, you do not need to check whether inverse is there inside H or not. So, it is enough to just check only that A B ok the closure property is satisfied or not only for the finite group this we can actually do ok. So, <coughs> how do we prove this? To prove this it is enough to prove that a B inverse is in H for all A B in H ok. So, enough to prove A B inverse is in H for all A B in H, but if you think about it because the closure property is already there. So, instead of proving this it is enough to prove B inverse is in H for all B in H because once is once B inverse is there then A B inverse is there ok. So, that is why this is enough. So, now if you think about it what is B inverse? So, B inverse is B power some k where k is coming from z plus. So, that is what we observe because any for any element A the inverse of A is given by some integral power ok this this power is from g plus ok. So, that means, so b inverse must be b power k for k in a z plus, but already you have the closure property. So, if you apply repeatedly by taking a equal to b then a square is there again b equal to a square a cube is there and so on. So, that means, you can Im immediately observe that using the closure property b power any b power should be there inside ok. So, first of all ok, so you may ask like uh, so the highest powers are there, so what is about the lowest powers ok. So, of course, <coughs> if h is just identity then there, there is nothing to prove, if h is not identity then it will have some non-identity element. If you take non-identity element 
then inverse of that non identity element must satisfy the following okay so let's let's write down proper argument okay because there are two cases so one side is easy h is subgroup then that implies this that is fine we are proving the other way to prove the other way it is enough to prove b inverse is in h for all b in h so now if h is just identity so then there is nothing to prove okay there is nothing to prove so let's assume h is non identity so start with b which is non identity in h then b will be in b inverse will be b power k for some k for some k now which is positive okay i can assume to be natural number why if k is 0 then b power 0 is identity so b inverse is identity if b inverse is identity then b is identity okay so that is why i can guarantee that so this is coming from natural numbers so now using the closure property you can see that this b power k must be inside h so that would imply that b inverse is in h so now using again the closure property b times b inverse that is identity which is in h okay so that way you proved that both inverse as well as identity element must be inside h anyway so basically we used any inverse of non identity element is some positive power of b okay so using that we verified that uh, inverse must be there now using closure property the closure on ab inverse is in h is already verified okay so that is all we wanted to verify so now let's get back to the set that we were interested in so we fixed this a inside g and again i am assuming g is finite okay g is a finite group so then we looked at this identity which is a power 0 a a square and so on so this is the set we cons considered inside g so what is the important thing we observed this a inverse is in inside this a e a a square and so on so this is what we observed but if you think about it this set is closed under multiplication it satisfies the closer property why because if you take any power of this it will be a power k times a power k dash both k k dash they are non negative integral powers okay so then if you multiply them you get a k plus k dash so if you add two non negative numbers you get non negative number okay so then this is there in this set identity a a square etc so that means this set that we have considered it is indeed a subgroup of G. okay if you think about it it is the smallest subgroup containing this uh, a so what i mean by that so if you take any other group subgroup that contains a then that subgroup must contain this okay so we will talk about uh, subgroup generated by some subsets in the next class but this is one example of subgroup generated by particular element okay so this we denote it by this angle bracket a. so this means this is the subgroup generated by a of course what happens in the general group okay if g is just a any group okay so then if i take an element a in g and if you are interested in constructing subgroup generated by a 
so then you can see that you have to allow all integral powers obviously the sub group subgroup generate containing a must contain all the powers of a positive powers and then their inverses which is negative power so all the integral powers are there so this a power k k in z so this should be part of your subgroup now you can directly verify this itself is a subgroup okay this a power k k is in z why because a power k times a power any minus k dash so you have to verify a b inverse is there na so this is your a this is your b inverse so then you can see that this is nothing but a power k minus k dash which is if k is integer k dash is integer then k minus k dash is integer so this must be again inside your subset so then this is the subgroup generated by that given element a so we will talk about uh, a subgroup generated by any subset in the next lecture okay we are running out of time i will stop here thank you